Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com and today I'm going to be talking about or showing you, giving you five essential tips to keep you safe at your next jam session. But before we get into that, I want to talk about why you should be going to jam sessions. And in fact, in before that, I want to tell you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously you get notified when we update or release new lessons, which is every week. And uh, and hopefully at the end of this lesson, you'll you know I'll deliver sufficient information that you'll want to do that. So the five essential tips to jam sessions or surviving your next jam session. But first of all, as I said, I want to tell you why it's so important that you're going to jam sessions and jamming with other people because. This is why we practice, it's why we're in the shed all the time, it's why we're practicing grooves and transcribing and learning our arpeggios and learning our scales. Doing all of this stuff is so we can use it or we should be using it with other musicians. And I can really, really, really speak from experience when I say, once you're on the bandstand, that's where the real learning takes place. So you're doing yourself a huge, um, a huge disservice if you're not getting out there, you know, at jam sessions, jamming with friends, whatever it is, but using this information that you're practicing every day, you know, putting your heart and soul into, you need to be taking it out and using it with other musicians. And that's where the real magic takes place and the real learning will take place as well. That said, jam sessions can be hellishly scary. I know because, you know, Years ago, I was in the same situation you were. I was wondering, you know, should I go to a jam session? What happens when I go there? You know, the, the, whole, nine, the whole nine yards, it's a scary situation. And hopefully with the tips I tell you today, it'll make it a little less scary. So let's get into tip number one. Okay, so number one might sound a little obvious, but I think it is one of the key things that I don't see when I'm, when I'm at jam sessions, okay? Now turn up prepared, turn up prepared, have your own bass with you, have your own lead or cable with you and have a tuner, okay? Your own bass, your own lead and a tuner because if you get up and play somebody else's bass, it might feel very weird because you haven't, you're not used to it. You know, I've turned up to jam sessions and played on other pe people's basses. Um, if I know them, I'm always, I'm still, you know, I'm still a bit like, oh, I hope it's gonna be okay. I hope it suits my playing style. Um, but if I don't know them, then it really, you know, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, you know, not about playing, about the bass. I'm like, well, I hope it's, I hope it feels okay for me. So do yourself a favor, take your own bass, okay? Take your own cable because, you know, there's nothing worse than somebody, you know, taking their bass off and unplugging their cable and then you get in there with your bass and there's no cable, okay? So take your bass, take your cable and take a tuner, Take a tuner. And on top of all that, make sure you turn it with good vibes and a great attitude, okay? In fact, that's probably the most important thing of all these tips when you go into jam sessions. Number two is repertoire. You, you know, you turn up to these jam sessions, but turn up knowing some tunes, okay? Don't be, don't think that, you know, don't be there to be babied. You want, you want to turn up prepared. You want to turn up with repertoire as well. And repertoire for any musician is massively important, but it is really key when you turn up to jam sessions, okay? So make sure that you, for instance, know a blues sequence. How many jam sessions have you been to when you see a band playing a blues? Or you get together with friends. What should we play? Let's play a blues. You need to know a blues, you know, the common blues sequence, okay? On top of that, I would say know at least five to 10 really popular tunes within the genre of the jam session, okay? So if, if it's a jam session, I mean a jazz jam session, you're going to want to know some, you know, some standards. You, you're going to need to know like uh, all the things you are, autumn leaves, uh, days of wine and roses, but beautiful, beautiful love, blue bosser, you know, all the, those types of standards. And it is really going to help you as well in jazz jam sessions if you know stuff like, you know, the more the funky stuff, sort of like all blues, um, even down to sort of like a... You know, that like meters classics and stuff like that. Know some of the other... You know, that old Herbie Hancock 
classic chameleon. Um, know some of the funky stuff as well because they, those will get called. But equally, you know, if you're not into jazz at all, you know, there's rock jam sessions, you know, where I, like I've been to one out in LA and I was like, whoa, these guys know a lot of tunes. They knew loads of Zeppelin tunes and they knew some Queen songs and all these guys were getting up. I think Nuno Betancourt was there, <laughs> like crazy. So, you know, it, no five to 10 tunes in your, in the genre of the jam session that you're going to, okay? It's really, really important. You, what you don't want to do is get on that bandstand and people look at you and say, what tunes do you know? And you say, uh, none. You know, you need some and they need to be popular so other people will know them as well. Number three is know some stock intros and outros, okay? Stock intros and outros. Everybody always worries about the actual tune itself, but how do you get into it and how do you get out of it? It's something really to be mindful of. How are you going to start and how are you going to end? If you don't know any stock intros or outros, like this is, you can see this all the time with jazz jam sessions, you know, there's some real stock intros and outros. Again, blues jam sessions as well. There's a zillion stock intros and outros. And actually, if you're an Academy member, make sure you check out the blues course. It's like an hour and a half, two hours long. And one of the lessons in that that's like 20 minutes long is just on intros. And I think that we've got another lesson in that course as well, just on outros as well. The intros and outros are some things that, that people don't really think about them until you're there and you're like, oh no, how are we going to start the tune? You know, so you need to have some stock intros and outros down and in your bag, you know, in your toolbox of bass, bass them so you can pull it out and you know that you're going to have a really, you know, you're going to start the tune confidently and also you're going to finish the tune confidently as well. Again, if, you, if you're in the academy, check out the blues course because we cover a lot of intros and outros in there and uh, you'll be really, really pleased that you learn them, trust me. Number four is keep eye contact. Keep eye contact. I've seen so many jam sessions turn into train wrecks because some people, they get up and then the tune starts and then the heads go down, you know, and you're either head buried in a chart, you know, reading the lead sheet or, you know, just down in concentration. Now, I'm not saying don't concentrate. I'm not saying don't use lead sheets because they're incredibly valuable as well. And we're going to get into, get on onto that in the next point. But make sure at the same time that in your peripheral vision, especially if you're reading a lead sheet, you are looking out for people giving you cues, cueing the end of a solo or cueing you to solo, you know, or there's an ending coming or they're going to do something different that you might not know about. Even if it's a tune that you know and that you're playing, you need to be in, have eye contact with everybody. And what I always try to do is um, look out for the dominant character, the guy, the MD, the musical director. Even if there's not a specific musical director, somebody within the group will hopefully take control of the band and, and kind of lead them. So look out for that guy, whoever it is, guy or girl, and when you do, make sure you've got your eyes on them as well, especially for intros and outros and who's going to be soloing and stuff like that. So eye contact, super important. And number five, lastly, is learn to read chord charts. Learn to read lead sheets. I'm not talking about reading music. I know there's always this discussion about, oh, should I learn to read or not learn to read music, okay? You know, it's a great, it's a great skill to have. But something that is invaluable that every bass player on the entire entire planet should should do is learn to read chord charts and lead sheets. So a chord chart or a lead sheet is literally it's the chords and sometimes a melody, okay? And sometimes so it's not, you know, it's not a specific bass line a lot of the time. It's just chords. So you need to be able to understand chord symbols and be able to read them. And you need to understand the geography of the actual chart as well. So you need to know what a repeat sign is or a second, first and second time bar and all of that kind of stuff because it will save you so much work in the long run. Just learning to read um, lead sheets and chord charts will make you a better musician. I absolutely promise you. It'll open up so many doors by being able to by being able to read lead sheets and chord charts and write them as well. It's great to be able to write them because that, that way, you know, when you turn up to a practice session or a jam session with other friends, you can just, you can just jot, the, jot the chords down and you know the chord symbols. You don't need to write any, you know, weird stuff that only you 
understand it's really simple and it's really easy to use. In fact, we've just last week released an entire course, I think it's like an hour and a half or two hours long, into the academy at scottspacelessons.com and it is the reading lead sheet or reading chart survival guide. So it is, it is everything you need to know about how to read chord charts and lead sheets in one step-by-step -step course. So if you are an Academy member, make sure you've checked that out. Make sure you've checked that out. It's in the course library along with all the other courses. But if you're not already an Academy member, just hit the link below if you're on YouTube. Let's take over to scottspacelessons.com. Check out the Academy. It's a 14-day free trial. You can check it out risk-free and just, you know, just get stuck into that course. And then if you, you know, obviously you'll like that course, but check out all the other courses as well and the live sessions that we do every week. It'll be absolutely invaluable for your playing. So anyway guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and you've you know fully absorbed my five tips for surviving any jam session. Again, make sure you go to jam sessions guys. It is really, really cool. It's really great, great networking tool. It's a really great, you know, making new friends that, you know, all dig music and dig the same type of music that you do if you go into, you know, style specific jam sessions and things like that. If you're totally new to Scott's Bass Lessons, I should say, go over to scottsbasslessons.com and check out the free bass toolkit. You'll see it in the top navigation of the website. Click on that, go through, check out all that we've got, like the free courses, we've got free backing tracks, we've got um, bass, um, bass player, what's it, a baseline creation guide, we've got a buying guide in there, tons of cool, cool stuff anyway, so I know a lot of you will have checked that out already, but if you are new to Scott Space Essence, make sure you check that out. Now, as always guys, I'll see you next week, and until then, take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed. Bye.